Okay, the video that I said I was going to do uh, after reading my subscription copy of BBC Wildlife magazine. And here it is, BBC Wildlife magazine, the latest issue with Tiger on the front. And an article uh, on conservation, seven radical ways to beat poaching. Uh, one of the points in that article uh, by the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland's very own Rob Ogden, uh, who's uh, very much involved with the Wild Genes Lab at Edinburgh Zoo. However, the page that I mentioned in my post earlier is here. It's this one, Agenda, Agenda News. And it's got Mark Carwardin's uh, always insightful and thoughtful uh, column. Where he says, world leaders, wake up please. Indeed, world leaders, wake up please. And there are some brilliant articles that really show the difference between how parts of the UK work as regards nature and wildlife. And conservation. Uh, let me start though with some of the things that I know happen in Scotland and I know some of you know what happened in Scotland as well because some of you are uh, friends from out the zoo so you'll know about this the Scottish Beaver Trial all about reintroducing beavers to Scotland. Uh, it's a joint project between the Scottish Wildlife Trust, the Forestry Commission of Scotland and the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland uh, and also Scottish Natural Heritage uh, are involved as well as uh, they are the main body that uh, does all the stuff for the Scottish Government. Very interesting program. The, the trial itself has come to an end, and at the moment, all the, the participating bodies are preparing their reports to hand in uh, to the Scottish Parliament, to the Scottish Government next year, and hopefully, all will go well. A lot of sa science is involved, a lot of scientific evidence from other countries show the immense value of what beavers do, creating wetlands for new wildlife and so on. During the trial process they discovered uh, more information about uh, beavers living in Tayside, uh, out with the trial area. Uh, these were beavers that were released from private collections possibly, uh, Ill illegally. But after doing a little bit of research they discovered no one's complaining about them, they're not causing any problem. So, while the trial is still going on, and while we're still looking at things, let's just leave them be. They're not doing any damage, no one's complaining, they're not diseased, there's, there's no problems, basically. Leave them be, and we'll worry about them if the trial suggests, you know, let's not bother. There are other things that beavers have been found to be useful for in flood control because they create wetlands further up, upstream. Uh, it reduces floods downstream, basically. Now, here's the point. Wetlands. Wetlands are very useful for water voles. Uh, essential habitat for water voles. And this is something else that the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland had been involved in, the reintroduction of the water vole in the Trossachs. Uh, however, that has cost money to re-establish new wetlands for the water voles. And, you know, when you look at it, you can see if we have beavers, we don't have to go to the cost of cre creating new wetlands for the water vole. The beaver will do it for us. For free. 
clever. One of the other things that they're doing with as regards the Trossic Water Bowl is getting rid of the American mink. This is the key to your water bowl survival, to get rid of your American mink. Now, back to BBC Wildlife magazine. As you can see, from what I've just said, uh, the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland, through Scottish Natural Heritage and other uh, interesting parties, uh, on behalf of the Scottish Government, are involved with lots of good conservation projects. Bringing back wildlife, na native wildlife, and uh, the natural balance of things to Scotland. Brilliant, superb, the Scottish Government is on board with good conservation programmes. Now this is one of this is the main reason why in the Scottish referendum I voted yes. Because for me environmental is very, very valuable. Uh, for me it outweighed any economic argument, uh, because in the grand scheme of things, let's be honest, the environment is more important in economics, something that I'll come to before I finish this video. But we'll go back to the agenda news in BBC Wildlife magazine. Now one of the articles mentions that uh, they have reintroduced water voles to Cornwall uh, and this could pave the way for the eradication of mink from the southwest. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, pave the way? You haven't started working on eradicating mink from the southwest? Don't you think you should be doing that first before you reintroduce the water voles? Because mink can get down the holes that the water voles live in. The American mink can, and they're the problem. So you've got to get rid of the American mink before you reintroduce. You've got to get rid of the problem before you reintroduce your native animals. Otherwise, you still have the problem. Now, they also mention that uh, in addition to the southwest, they could, you know, they'd be looking at doing reintroduction of the water bowl in Cumbria, Devon and Cornwall. Now, I seem to remember recently a report that mentioned a family of beavers living in the southwest that the government at Westminster wanted removed because they had been released illegally. And I just thought, you just think, well, okay, the beavers. Have they doing any harm? Don't think so. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you be better waiting until they've got the results of the Scottish Beaver Trial before you do anything as regards your beaver family in the South West? Because particularly if you're looking at reintroduction, reintroducing water voles, the beaver could actually be assisting in uh, creating Habitat for your water voles and doing it for free because it's going to cost tax, it's going to take taxpayers' money to catch these beavers and also help the establish wetlands for your water voles. So, by leaving your beavers be, I've just saved you money twofold on two different projects. Taxpayers' money. That's you and me. The British public. The taxpayer. Now, DEFRA, a government department. This is another article. And this shows how government departments are stupid. 
particularly when that information is possibly coming from the government itself. Because a plan to reverse declines, I'm just, I'm quoting here, plan to reverse declines in insects such as bees and butterflies could be a lost opportunity if the government doesn't offer farmers proper incentives to protect them, say a committee of MPs. So, basically, this committee of FP MPs is uh, saying, good plan, good move, but you've got to do more, do more, please do more. DEFRA's response seems to be something along the lines of in fact DEFRA's response is this report recognises we are doing more than ever to protect pollinators not least encouraging people to take simple steps such as growing more pollen rich flowers so basically DEFRA is saying yes we're doing good we're not going to do any more because we're doing enough no you're not you need to do more. You're going the right way. Keep going in that direction. Because long term, that's the way it goes. And it's going to save you so much in the long run. In the long term. Because the environment is like that. On the same page. Something about something the Scottish Government are doing. This is totally different. Because what the Scottish Government are doing is they're doubling the size of its ma marine protection area network. It will now protect a further 12% of territorial waters. And the key places that are being focused on for protection are habitats, critical, critical habitats for basking sharks, minke whales, and Rousseau's dolphins. Basically, the Scottish government is doing one hell of a lot to help the environment. Comes back to the beaver trap. Now, if you think that I'm saying all of this about the environment because I'm getting money out of it, no. It's a global thing. Everywhere we have to do something locally because that will then collectively mount up globally. And if you ever want to get a rough idea of how important it is, and you're not that hot on the real sort of deep detailed scientific reports, let me point you in, in the direction of a really good book that really brings it home in a very dramatic fashion. This one. If uh, you're ever at Edinburgh Zoo, you'll find it in the gift shop. Buy it. It's a good read. Remember, if you're a member at Edinburgh Zoo, you get a 10% discount. It sounds like I'm doing a publicity job for Edinburgh Zoo, and I am. It's a book called Do We Need Pandas, it's by Ken Thompson and it is definitely worth a read. But, people who know me will know that I love cockroaches. It's a long term goal of mine to keep Madagascan is in cockroaches, because I think they're awesome. Insects, animals, wildlife, nature, biodiversity is awesome. It's important. Well, let me give you some examples. I've got them all marked here, little orange tabs, see, already prepared. One of my favourite ones is the dung beetle. Dung beetles prevent fouling of forage, promote dung decomposition into useful plant fertiliser and reduce the populations of parasites and pest flies. So an important insect. However, if you're using insecticides, you're going to kill these guys off, along with all the other insects. 
because insecticides don't discriminate. So the real thing is to get the natural thing. So the value of that service, of the three things that it does, is worth somewhere in the region of $380 million. Not much. Really. But, that's at 2006 prices. And it's a conservative estimate. But, let's build on all the other things that that then has a knock-on effect to. The control of pest insects reduces crop losses somewhere in the region of $4.49 billion. Now this is only America, so extrapolate this over to other countries. It also aids crop pollination by wild insects to the tune of, of $3.07 billion. Now, wildlife nutrition, because the insects that are then flying about are then, fed, then feed wildlife. American citizens, for example, spend $60 billion on shooting, fishing and observing wildlife. 60 billion US dollars. The value of insects to bird watching alone is somewhere in the region of 19.76 billion dollars. Because insects are a critical food source for much of this wildlife. So therefore, that's why it is estimated that the value of the work that the dung beetle does, because of all the knock-on effect of this humble little beetle living off all this dung, is worth 60 billion US dollars to the American economy each year and even that estimate might be a little bit on the low side possibly by a few billion dollars I was going to say about that one but I don't think I'll yeah, oh well every year we lose so much of our wild places our wild habitat how much is that worth to mankind, PLC? 250 billion US a year? How much is this global finance problem? That we had recently? And don't think biofuels are the way forward either. We need to find a completely different source from the internal combustion engine. The internal combustion engine has seen its day. We need to forget that because to make biofuel replace our carbon-based fuels, 70% of the UK crop of grain would have to be used just to keep the UK going in biofuel. So therefore, at the moment there's about 5% of it. But that would have to be increased to 70% of it. Therefore, taking away from food. So, you have a plain choice. You can either keep the internal combustion engine and starve or you can eat and get rid of the internal combustion engine but as I often say about conservation 
and why I have always said since I've learnt more about it that we need to focus on conservation because the value is immense. The return value from good targeted conservation work is immense. Now I've just told you what one little dung beetle is worth and consider that every animal is doing something for us on the planet and it's doing it for free. Now this book the, f the figures are out of date. Uh, it was first published in 2010, so the figures will be out of date. But just to give you an, an example, in 2010, BirdLife International reckoned that with £19 million, pounds, that's 30 million US dollars, 30 million, not billion, million, so it's small change, really, in comparison. Well targeted, over the next five years, they could save from extinction all of the world's 189 critically endangered bird species. So all of your most critically endangered bird species would be taken off the list. Not because they're extinct, but because they've been saved for 19 million quid. I think that's good value for money. I think that is incredible value for money. And it is said that a good start, also again from the same book, a good start on solving the most urgent conservation problems could be made with only five billion US dollars. Every country can make a make a contribution. Bear in mind that in the UK there is 13 billion spent on illegal drugs. And in America five billion is what is spent each year on Halloween. Five billion. Quite frankly, the economic crisis conservation, global conservation, global environmental conservation is small change in respect of the global economic crisis. Conservation is far far more important and because of the way the Scottish Government has been dealing with the environment compared to Westminster that is why I voted yes nothing to do with economics economics long term is the least of our worries long term it's the environment that is important do we need pandas? Let me tell you this, with most species, the time that we've discovered that we need them is when they've gone extinct. Let's not find out. Let's put some effort into conservation. Thank you very much.